Welcome to the latest in our Get Data Protection Fit series, where we will be focusing on how to keep your Article 30 records up to date. Hello, my name is Martin McElroy, and I'm a Senior Data Protection Advisor in the Field Fisher Data Team, part of the Technology and Data Team. I'm also Field Fisher's Data Protection Officer. I'm joined today by Alice Graham, who's an associate in the data team, and Casey Ann Keating, who is a solicitor apprentice in the data team. Thank you for joining us for the latest of our Get Data Protection Fit video series. We are now into the third year of this series, and all previous videos can be found on the Field Fisher Data Team YouTube channel. This third Get Data Protection Fit series has focused on a range of GDPR accountability measures. And in this particular video, we will be explaining how to keep your records of processing or Article 30 records up to date. This video, along with the others in the 2022 series, can all be found on the Field Fisher Data Team YouTube channel. Please do like and subscribe to the channel to ensure that you're informed of any new releases. And so by the end of this session, you should be better able to explain the importance of records processing activities, or ROPA, or Article 30 records, how to keep the ROPA up to date, how often or when to update the ROPA, and the format in which to update the ROPA. You might find it helpful to view or revisit our initial records processing video first to get the basic background in ROPAs. This can be found in video three of module 2A of our Get Data Protection Fit series on YouTube. However, Casey Ann will recap on the fundamentals of the ROPA over the next few slides by way of refresher if you do not have time to watch back on this first ROPA video. So, what is a ROPA? By definition, a ROPA is a record of an organization's processing activities involving personal data. It is a requirement under the GDPR, and controllers and processors each have their own documentation obligations. A ROPA is a good indicator of how seriously a company takes its GDPR compliance, in line with the accountability principle. A ROPA is also crucial for the preparation of data protection impact assessments, which we focused on in an earlier series. Pursuant to Article 30, Section 3 of the GDPR, it must be in written or electronic text form. Typically, a ROPA should include, as a minimum, your organisation's name and contact details, whether it's a controller or a processor, and where applicable, the joint controller, their representative and the DPO, the purposes of the processing, a description of the categories of individuals and of personal data, the categories of recipients of personal data, details of transfers to third countries, including a record of the transfer mechanism safeguards in place, retention schedules, and a description of the technical and organisational security measures in place. If you'd like more information on ROPAs and how to create one, you can take a look at our earlier Get Data Protection Fit video on this. For this module, we will assume you already have some form of ROPA in place. It's a legal requirement under the GDPR to document your processing activities. Taking stock of what information you have, where it is and what you do with it makes it much easier for you to improve your information governance and comply with other aspects of data protection law. It's a clear way to show what you're doing in line with the accountability principle. Remember, your processing won't be lawful without a valid lawful basis, so you must justify your choice appropriately. In light of increasing data protection regulator enforcement action, ROPA creation and maintenance is now more important than ever for organisations. A regulator may ask for a copy of the ROPA as part of an investigation following incidents such as a data breach. Good ROPA maintenance can, therefore, help businesses avoid possible findings of GDPR violations and related fines. There have been a number of specific fines from regulators for poor accountability, some of them fairly high. These fines are often linked to other issues such as data breaches and data subject rights complaints that cause a regulator to carry out a more extensive investigation of the organisation that includes a review of the ROPA. Larger organisations typically create individual ROPA documents for each department or individual streams of businesses. These are then compiled into one enterprise level record. Smaller organisations often begin their ROPA documentation using a simple spreadsheet, 
As the organisation grows, ROPA documentation and maintenance will have to be scaled up. In a large organisation, privacy managers and compliance teams often need the help of data teams to do this. Alice will talk you through how to keep your ROPA up to date in a later slide. Thanks, Casey Ann. Turning to look now at the practicalities of keeping the ROPA up to date. As a first step, you need organisational measures in place that means there is someone in the business with overall accountability for the ROPA. This accountable person is usually a senior figure in the business, such as the data protection officer, who can allocate responsibility for updating the ROPA to certain individuals. If the organisation is big enough, you may have dedicated in-house privacy or compliance teams who are responsible for liaising with different business units and updating the ROPA accordingly. But if not, you could assign responsibility to individual business leaders to organise ROPA updates. For example, the head of HR is responsible for making sure the ROPA for HR data is kept up to date. The head of marketing is responsible for marketing data and so on. You should make sure that responsible people are given training on the ROPA and how to update it. This is because it is important that they know what your organization's responsibilities in relation to ROPAs are, and so know how to identify a change in processing activity and when a corresponding update to the ROPA needs to take place. You need to keep on top of what data you are processing and how you are processing it. When initially creating your ROPA, you will almost certainly have had to undertake a data mapping exercise. By data mapping, we mean carrying out some form of information audit to find out what personal data your organization holds and for what purposes. An annual data protection audit is a continuation of this initial data mapping exercise. During the audit, you review the personal data being processed by the organisation across the different business units and the related data processing purposes and check for any changes. To do this, you could distribute questionnaires to different business units and talk to staff across the organisation to gather information on your processing activities. You could also review internal policies and procedures, as well as contracts and other data processing agreements to gather information on areas such as retention, security and data sharing. Any changes to your data processing activities should be documented in the ROPA. Expanding a little more on data retention, you should review any retention periods in place and check these are being followed. This could either be as part of the annual data protection audit or more regularly if needed. Your organisation should have a data retention policy setting standard retention periods for different categories of data. Again, Speaking with members of staff responsible for the day-to-day -day handling of personal data will help you identify whether these retention periods are appropriate or, if in practice, they need to be updated, perhaps to keep certain categories of data for longer or shorter periods of time. Your ROPA should include information on the location of personal data processed by your organisation and on any technical and organisational security measures in place. Data protection audits should involve the IT or InfoSec teams to make sure your organisation has up-to-date information asset registers. Information asset registers record assets, systems and applications used for processing and storing personal data across the organisation. Changes to these registers that show changes to how personal data is processed or stored should be reflected in the ROPA. 
Finally, you need to keep on top of who your organisation is sharing personal data with, what personal data is being shared, and for what purposes. This can be done by regularly reviewing the third party vendors your organisation is working with and any data sharing agreements that are in place. Examples of third party vendors include payroll providers, software solutions providers, and data hosting or storage solutions providers. Any changes to vendors and any changes to the personal data being shared with them or to the processing relationship should be documented in the ROPA. If your organisation starts working with new vendors, this information should also be included in the ROPA. It is important to understand that information gathered about new vendors at the point of engagement, along with any information the business holds, about its vendors in supplier spreadsheets or databases is particularly relevant and useful for the ROPA. Procurement teams can help you gather this relevant information, such as information on data storage locations or security measures, and pass this on to privacy teams or other teams responsible for updating and maintaining the ROPA. Of course, you will not just be sharing personal data with vendors and may be sharing it with other third parties, such as commercial business partners. You should keep on top of which third parties your organisation is sharing data with and what data sharing agreements are in place to make sure that this data sharing is captured in the ROPA. I will now hand you over to Martin, who will talk to when you need to update your ROPA and how you might go about doing this in practice. So we've recapped on why the rope is required. Analysis set out the need to have responsible teams and accountable roles to ensure the rope gets updated. Alice also looked at ensuring regular reviews of rope retention periods to ensure the data being processed is still relevant and required. The need to carry out information audits and reviews of the ROPA against information asset registers. Finally, we touched on the opportunities around third party due diligence and the need to ensure that there's a link between procurement teams and privacy teams or whoever is updating the ROPA so that vendor and other third party information is up to date and captured. But how often should you update your ROPA? Well, there's no clear cut answer to this and it will be dependent on the size of your organisation, your compliance resources and the type of processing that you do. As a broad recommendation, we would suggest that the ROPA gets reviewed on at least an annual basis, but you may be set up in such a way with automated privacy tech tools, for example, that ensures that information is being constantly collated from third party due diligence or information asset registers in, a, in an automated ROPA. If you're collecting the data in a more manual manner through the use of spreadsheets, questionnaires and the like, it may be that you can collect and update information for the ROPA on a monthly or quarterly basis. We would recommend that someone captures new or updated data whenever a new activity, such as a third party engagement or new IT project starts or ends. Quite often with new projects will necessitate a DPIA or a simpler privacy risk assessment. And we see a lot of clients successfully link this risk assessment process back to the ROPA by sharing the output of the DPIA with the teams responsible for updating the ROPA. Again, for some, this will be an automated privacy tech process. For others, it will be a manual sharing of the DPIA or risk assessment. Consistency is key. Find a cadence or frequency that works for you and your organization and ensure processes are in place to deliver it, as well as those accountable and responsible teams that Alice mentioned to carry the updates out. Finally, we touched on this in a previous slide, but how do you actually update your ROPA and what format should it be in? Again, there's no right or wrong answer here as long as your organization has a formal, documented and accurate ROPA, which is regularly reviewed and is based on the collection of information in the, the manner we have described in this session. For some, the ROPA will be maintained in a privacy tech tool such as OneTrust, which gets updated in an automated or semi-automated way. 
For others, it will be in the format of a spreadsheet or even a table within a Word document. And once again, our message is that consistency is key and the format is largely a moot point as long as the record is accurate and kept up to date. A number of European data protection authorities, for example, the CNIL in France or the ICO in the UK, have published ROPA templates on their websites in Excel. And these can be easily downloaded and used by your organization. And if you already have your own ROPA formats in place, it may be useful to check the format of your ROPAs against these templates to ensure that there are no gaps and you've captured the required fields, which Casey Ann mentioned earlier in this session. Both the ICO and CNIL websites have templates for controller and processor ROPAs. And just to note that our guidance in this video applies to whether you're updating your ROPAs in your capacity as a controller or as a processor. And while there's less information to document as a processor, processor, as Alice pointed out, there is the need for you to make sure you keep on top of your customer base and any commercial business partners. And quite often, customer relationship management or CRM teams or tools will be a rich repository of information for processor records as they will help you identify the controllers for which you are processing data for. There may be several different categories of processing you carry out for each controller, and in turn, there could be different types of international transfers, security measures, and so on, which needs to be captured. The approaches we have set out above should help capture this information as it would for controller ROPAs. And there we have it. At the end of this session, you should now be able to explain the importance of the ROPA, how to keep the ROPA up to date, how often or when to update the ROPA, and the formats on which you can maintain your ROPA. If you're interested in learning more about data and privacy, we have a rich bank of resources on our YouTube channel. These range from modular training programs for lawyers and privacy professionals, through to recordings of individual webinars or mini series delivered by the team. Please do like and subscribe to the channel to ensure that you're informed of new releases. To join our YouTube channel, just follow the link that's on screen and that will take you through to the Field Fisher Data Team page. We also have a blog and email update, which is available through the second link on screen, and that can be received daily, weekly or monthly. We hope you found this session useful. Please do get in contact if you have any queries or comments. Thank you for watching and goodbye.